If you're here this morning and you are a white, male, Native American, heterosexual, Christian. Now, heterosexual has been changed to cisgender. That's a person whose gender identity matches their birth assigned, their sex assigned at birth. If this describes you this morning, I declare to you, I don't, but culture tells us you are a racist. If your response is to say, I am not a racist, you're being racist. You say, okay, well, wait a minute. Let's look at some facts. What facts do you see in my life that would tell you that I'm a racist? Um, Let's use some critical thinking here. Um, That's being racist because appealing to facts and critical thinking are products of whiteness. Your negative reaction is evidence of your white fragility. White fragility is when white people get nervous about talking about race. But now, just recently, they now have expanded it to brown fragility. Wonder where else they can go with this. Any criticism of the current social justice movement makes you guilty of hate speech. Some people who will listen to this message will accuse me of using hate speech, simply because I disagree with what's happening in culture. For example, if a man transitions to be a woman and declares that they are actually a woman and you disagree with that, you're a racist, you're a homophobe, you're a transphobe. What, are we, what we are seeing being played out on the streets of some of our major cities is rooted in a parasitic philosophy and a man-made religion. Welcome to the new cult of wokeness. Welcome to the great awokening. If you say, now, wait a minute, some of that sounds a little strange. The uh, um, Museum for African American Art was uh, for the Smithsonian uh, culture, African American culture. Uh, They came out with a chart that they published about how you can identify your white privilege. And they noticed all these things that were uh, supposedly characteristics of what we would say was American culture what they say is white culture. That was based on a book by Judy Gatz called White Awareness Handbook for for Anti-Racist Training. And what we're we're gonna talk about is that even though you don't think you're a racist according to culture, you are a racist. And the idea of being woke, if you hear that terminology, being woke means that you now recognize that there is systemic racist in the culture and that you yourself are part of this racist culture. You are, uh, um, it is this new cult of wokeness. It is really an assault on Western civilization, is, is an assault on Christianity. One of the things that was on the chart, which they took down because they got so much flack about it, one of the things that was on this chart uh, from the Smithsonian Museum was Christianity. Uh, Christianity is a product of whiteness. Uh, Hello, Jesus Christ was not a white man. The apostles were not white men. They're Jews, they're Middle Eastern. Um, The patriarchal family is, say, evidence of whiteness, the traditional family. And so our culture is under attack. Tragically, it's working its way into our churches and it is having devastating effect. Now you hear about woke church conferences, you hear about woke church pastors. I do a lot of research and reading on this, and two men who are not Christians, uh, they don't claim to be Christians, they in fact claim to be atheists, and these men are sort of the experts on this whole new idea of wokeness and everything that's happening here. They say, if we really wanted to destroy the evangelical church in America, we would fill it with woke pastors because it's going to have a parasitic and devastating effect. I truly believe it is Satan's primary contemporary weapon in our culture today. In Ephesians 6, Paul says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Make no mistake about it, this is a spiritual battle. And Christianity, of course, we know that we're always under assault by the enemy. The word wows here is the word for method. Satan has a methodology. Satan works through deception. He works through lies. And Jesus says of Satan in John 8, 44, he's a liar and he is the father of it. One of the things that I saw as I did a lot of this research is so many, and these are secular people and atheists, and, and they're saying, you know, it's amazing. You would think there is a conspirator. You would think there's a massive mind behind all this. Of course, we know there isn't. Unfortunately, we know there is. And that massive entity that's pulling all this together is Satan. And these, these atheists are warning the church of America against the danger of wokeness. And so I wanted to come to, the, to Colossians because in Colossians we see the early church and they were being assaulted by Satan and his emissaries, the false teachers. Uh, this church was, we believe, started by a man named Epaphras. Epaphras was so concerned for this congregation that was being assaulted by false teachers and false ideologies, he made a 1,300-mile trip to Rome to visit Paul who was being held there. And so Paul then wrote this letter as he sent it back to the church at Colossae with Epaphras. 1 John 5.19 says, We know we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. The passage that uh, Luann read from 1 John tells us that the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world, and, he, and that spirit has already been in the world. But we see that increasing and in new contemporary ways as Satan works his deception. And he does it through philosophy. When I was younger, I always thought philosophy was, no, you know, the pen is mightier than the sword and all of that. But the older you get, the more you realize how different philosophical ideas can, can take root in a culture. And this is what's happening here in America. And it was what was happening in Colossae. John MacArthur writes, the Greeks loved knowledge and prided themselves on the sophistication of their philosophical systems. And so they would have been especially vulnerable to the false heresies that was coming into Colossae. Now, unlike Galatians, we don't know the exact false teaching that they were dealing with, but most likely, because Gnosticism was so prevalent in the first century, some of it was certainly had a Gnostic kind of influence, and I'll show you how that uh, is part of what we're dealing with today. So what do we see here in this passage? We see Paul warn the church of the dangers of pagan philosophy. He warned the church of the dangers of pagan philosophy. Today, in the 21st century, we do need and still need to be warned about the dangers of pagan philosophy. And this philosophy of social justice, this philosophy of wokeness, is a pagan philosophy. Verse 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy or empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. The English Standard Version translates that takes you captive. Don't be taken captive by these false, pagan, man-made, man-centered philosophies that are so prevalent in culture today. The word philosophy means love of or pursuit of wisdom. And the church has, since its inception, faced the infiltration of error through false philosophies. And one of the common errors that we see echoing in this woke religion is Gnosticism. The tenets of social justice, the tenets of the movement, are two primary tenets, critical race theory and intersectionality. And these tenets were, were developed out of postmodern thought. In postmodernism, there is no overarching truth. There is no absolute truth. There is no meta narrative. There, there are only small mini narratives. You have your truth, and I have my truth. 
And I have no right to say that your truth is invalid. In fact, I have to validate your truth, even if it is 180 degrees opposite of what my truth is. And so a person can say they transition from being a woman to a man or a man to a woman, and, and they've gone to the point now where they are actually saying they are actually a woman, even though they're a man. And, and you have to accept this, and if you don't accept this, then you're not woke, you're a racist, you're a bigot. It's incredible when man strays from the word of God that he will believe the most abject foolishness and insanity, and that's what we see happening today. For Romans chapter 1, Paul said, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. In my study, I found it so telling that many of the secular voices that are critical of, of, of wokeness are telling us that it has all the earmarks of a religion, particularly a cult. And if you look at cults and you look at how cults you know, initiate people and how they brainwash people, it's amazing you see that same parallel in this whole movement of wokeness. Truth now is replaced by narrative. There is no truth. You have your narrative. It's all based on your experiences. And through your experiences, you have a view of the world. And so it doesn't matter if this lines up with reality or not. For a, for a person to say, I'm a man, but I've transitioned to be a woman, and I am actually now a woman. Do you realize how far you have to go to accept that kind of an idea? That's just insanity. And yet this is what is dominating in our culture. Those who hold to the tenets of wokeness do so with sacred fervor. Sacred fervor. You see... You can't apply facts. You can't use the scientific method because these are all products of whiteness. And so we have to now look for something else. So what we look for is a person's lived experience. And so this now becomes primary. No debate, no disagreement is permitted. Those who disagree are denounced, canceled, cast out as heretics. They have their priests and priestesses. They have their canon of scripture. Some of the books I'll mention here and others, they have their philosophy. And, and for them, it, it, you know, what we would view as total depravity, now that has been replaced by racism. That's the ultimate sin, which you see everywhere in everybody. This is a cult. This is a religion, which doesn't surprise us because that's what Satan does. He takes philosophy, and, and, and he's always promoting false religion. And this is his latest package that he has put out and put upon people. One of the leaders is Robin D'Angelo. She's a white woman. She wrote the best-selling book, White Fragility. She's a professor at the University of Washington, she specializes in whiteness studies, whiteness studies. She gave a speech at Boston University. The first thing she did was apologize for being white. And then she said, I'd like to be a little less white, which means a little less oppressive, oblivious, defensive, ignorant, and arrogant. So in other words, these are qualities of whiteness, defensiveness, ignorance, oppressive, arrogant, she went on to make this claim to say that white people who see people as individuals rather than by their skin color are, in fact, dangerous. So we were talking about this yesterday and in the room back here with Afalabi. And so if I, I have to see Afalabi as part of his ethnicity, not as a brother in Christ. You see how, how upside down this is? This is a religion. By the way, when do you kneel? Have you seen the protesters? 
What are they doing? They're kneeling. Have you seen when that, the first baseball game, I didn't see this, but Sally told me about it. Uh, at the baseball game, they rolled out this black carpet or whatever, and all the baseball players kneeled. Now, I did kneel on one knee when I asked Sally to marry me. She said, get down on two knees and beg. No, she didn't say that. Um, <laughs> the only time I kneel now, I kneel for one reason and to one person. I kneel to worship before the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the only person I kneel to. <laughs> Don't tell me this is not a religion. They are kneeling. They are doing obeisance. In fact, the very word worship has the idea of doing obeisance, of kneeling. This is a cult. This is energized by Satan. So that if you see someone as an individual and you are not referring to their skin color, you're a dangerous person. I wonder what Martin Luther King would think of that when in 1963, the March on Washington, by the way, Martin Luther King believed in nonviolence. He said those classic words, which many of you remember and have heard, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will be judged by the color of their skin, not, not, where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I think he would weep if he saw what was happening in culture today. Everything now is about race. These people actually believe that the systemic racism, meaning that underneath the veneer of whiteness in all of us, lays this hidden layer of latent racism. And you are a racist, whether you believe it or not. And if you say, I'm not, in their eyes, you've just proved that you're a racist. In fact, they go one step further. They say to us, you can't even know if you're a racist. This is where Gnosticism comes in. In fact, Vody Bauckham, who is a uh, African-American uh, pastor, and actually he ministers in Africa as well, he has labeled this ethnic Gnosticism. You see, the Gnostics believed that they had special intuitive knowledge that nobody else had. And that's what you see, some of which, which Paul writes here, and particularly in the book of Galatians. And so they had this belief that, you know, they had this special kind of intuitive knowledge. And, and really, this is a form of Gnosticism. Vodi says, because of one's ethnicity, people are able to know if something is racist. In other words, you have to be part of a oppressed group. And only if you're part of an oppressed group can you identify racism in other people. And so I don't know what I don't know. So I need somebody to come from an oppressed group and to help me uncover my latent racism. And if you think that sounds crazy, it's actually happening in many corporations where they're bringing in these so-called professionals and people are having these sessions where women end up crying and, 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 and they, they confess their latent racism that they didn't know they have. That's going to make a great work environment, isn't it? It creates chaos. See, this is all about deconstructing. Uh, this is all about critical race theory, and the word critical is key. It's, it basically breaks everything down, and it provides no solutions. A person of color or a homosexual has greater knowledge because no one outside their group has their experience. That's what intersectionality is. You take, this is where the intersections of life. So you take someone who's a woman, that's a oppressed group according to them, and then uh, you, would, you would take her and, and then she, she, she would be a, a person of color, and then let's say she would be a lesbian. And so you would have those facts inter where they intersect, where they all come together, that's, the, that's her identity. And then she's applied to that identity group. And so you don't see her as an individual. You see her as part of an identity group. And, and the more identities you have, they tell us, the more insight you have that you are able to detect racism in other people. It is absolute insanity. James Linz, Lindsay, who is an, an atheist, but he does a lot of work on this and uh, has, has uh, written a lot about it. 
He says, critical race theory is that knowledge is produced in the midst of a group that can't be understood outside of that group. These people's shared experiences give them special insight that cannot be examined or criticized by another culture. So that identity group has a knowledge that can't be questioned by those outside the group. So you can't question them. And here's a man who's in the university who's frustrated because he says, you can't dialogue now. Because if you don't have that group identity, because you see, I'm white, so I have the majority group understanding and perspective. But then you take someone who would be a, of another color or would be a homosexual or whatever, they have not only the identity because they live in a, in a quote unquote white privileged society, but then they have these other insights. So they actually have more insight than other people and they can identify in you racism even when you say, I am not racist. So there is no appeal to truth. There is no appeal to evidence. There is no appeal to critical thinking. And you can see how, you can just see the, 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 the bollical wisdom of Satan. And you hear the hiss of the serpent behind all of this. It's a complete insanity. There is not systemic racism in America. There is systemic lunacy in America right now. So you have to accept by faith what they say. And you cannot appeal to wisdom. This has spread through the culture. It started in the university. It has spread through the media. It has spread through entertainment. It is now threatening the church. And the frightening aspect is it's beginning to take hold in government. And, and I'll show you how this is going to end up destroying our republic unless we have some kind of turnaround. Racism is now redefined. It's in the air. It's all around us. You don't have to do anything that is racist because you are defined by your whiteness as a racist. Race is the club. Cultural Marxism is the arm. This is cultural Marxism. And you can go back, which takes a lot more time than we have this morning to see the roots of it. Now, wet wokeness has its own redefined terms. Just like the Gnostics in the first century, notice what Paul says here in verse 4. Now, this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. This is cult-like language manipulation. They take words and words that we think have a certain meaning, but that's not what they mean in the woke world. So here's some key words to look out for. Parents, when your kids are coming home from school, check out what they have. And if you see some of these words, be aware. The first word is diversity. Diversity. Hey, that sounds good. We're for diversity. You know, diverse people, diverse groups, diverse backgrounds. It's not what it means in the woke world. Diversity means only having more diverse representation of different lived experiences of oppression. So as these people come into these, these, these uh, companies and they begin to do these seminars, they talk about diversity, but what it means is only those who are woke have the right perspective because they're the only ones that have the lived experiences of oppression these are the people who are to be valued. These are the people who are to be hired. These are the people who are to be kept. And those who are unwoke, they lack a, an authentic critical view because they deny their latent racism and they have to be canceled. Inclusion. Inclusion sounds good. Hey, we're going to include everybody. We're going to be inclusive. But in the woke world, inclusive, inclusion becomes exclusion. Because this is what they mean by inclusion. An inclusive environment in which, uh, an inclusive environment is one which cannot create any feelings of exclusion or marginalization for protected classes. So you hear things like, when you hear this, safe spaces. Safe spaces. I need a safe space. I need... I need somewhere where you white people aren't. I need to take a vacation from you, you white people or, or whatever, or from you, you heterosexual people or whatever. 
because it's not including people, it's excluding people. Anybody from the dominant group, white people, must be censored, silenced, excluded. Truth is irrelevant since it is a white construct in their view. Now understand what I just said. Truth is irrelevant. When the, uh, the, the paper, that, the, the chart that the Smithsonian put out, some of the things they listed on there was truth. That's, that's an evidence of whiteness. The scientific method, critical thinking. How insane is this? How upside down is this? Peter Boshin says, evidentiary knowledge is a tool of whiteness. No dissent is permitted. And that's why you see an attack on free speech. Be very careful what you put on your social media. You could lose your job. I am not kidding. And you can find many examples of that. And in the books I've been reading, I see many examples of this. And it's not just at the university level. Because this is so taking hold and, and people are so afraid, companies are so afraid of being labeled racist, they have to virtue signal all over the place. They fall over backwards and people are literally losing their freedoms. Diversity, inclusion, equity. Now again, we, we would say equity means equality. Not in the woke world. Equity means adjusting shares so that outcomes are made equal for everyone. It comes from social equity theory, which is basically socialism. So if this person who's part of this aggrieved group has a different outcome from somebody in the majority group, white people, it's because of bigotry. It's always because of bigotry, always because of racism. And even if there's no empirical evidence of discrimination, because you can't use empirical evidence, you can't appeal to facts, because they in themselves are examples of racism. It, it, it's a catch-22. It's, it's a tool of Satan. This is the fact. You accept it by faith, and you cannot criticize it. And if you do criticize it, you're just proving that you are a racist. And so it creates discrimination, which they say discrimination is fine if you're doing it to combat racism. So they're allowed to discriminate, and they're allowed to cancel people. This is where you get the whole cancel culture and all of that. Well, I told you a couple weeks ago, there's no redemption even for the white woke. There's particularly no redemption for me because I am not woke. I understand what it means, and I've been awakened to what woke is, okay? So there's really no redemption for me. But even for the white person who buys into this and says, okay, I, I, I am woke, but one of their core tenets is the work of anti-racism is never done. Here's another one of their canons of Scripture. The book, Being White, Being Good, White complicity, white moral responsibility, and social justice pedagogy by Barbara Appleman says that if you try to bend to critical race theory, then you're only doing it to advance your privilege. So in other words, if you say, hey, I see this. I guess I am racist. Okay, I need to do the work. You're gonna, you hear that phrase. You got to do the work. You got to work on your racism. But Applebaum says, if you do that, you're only doing it to advance your white privilege. So in other words, you, you, you're, you're dead if you do it. You're dead if you don't do it. It's absolute insanity. There's no forgiveness, no redemption. Racism is now the parallel to total depravity. Everything that doesn't support the narrative is called hate speech. And don't be surprised when the day may come for us to be preaching the gospel, to be preaching about what the Bible says about sexuality and gender, first of all, we're going to lose our tax-exempt status. And don't think these doors can't be closed because that's where this will eventually go if we don't see a turnaround in this cult. You say, oh, pastor, that's just extreme. No. No, it is not. It's already taken over the universities. It's being promoted by social media and media and Hollywood. It's everywhere. And now it's coming into government. 
Loudoun County, Virginia has just announced that they'll be teaching white privilege to kindergarten. To kindergarten. Where do you think this country is going to be in 10 years? If, there, if, if, if our children, and you, I told you before about the 1619 project, which is a total lie, which now they're trying to get into the public schools, that America was not founded because of religious liberty, it was founded because of racism. And this is a hellish doctrine. Well, let's take heart before we go here. Paul's instruction to the Christians at Colossae is valid for us today. Verse 2, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. Harry Blamesmeyer says, our reliance upon the Bible as the word of God presupposes that advice given in one age is valid for another. And notice the difference between the terminology of the Bible and the terminology of wokeness. That we are knit together in love. We've attained to all riches of the full assurance of understanding. That we can know certain things. That there are truths. That there are things that are true and things that are false. The Holy Spirit creates unity. Satan creates division. And this critical race theory and intersectionality is incredibly divisive. This unity that we have is a unity of spirit because it's a unity of belief. We do not need man-made philosophies to gain wisdom. In Jesus, we have all riches of the full assurance of understanding. I don't need the forgiveness of the social justice warriors, and you don't either. What we need is the full, free forgiveness of Jesus Christ through the gospel. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice verse 3, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The word hidden there is where we get our English word for apocrypha. It was used by the false teachers at that time to refer to their writings, which contained the secret knowledge. Okay. Very similar to this wokeness, critical race, intersectionality theory. And so what we, Paul is saying here is, look, there's no hidden spiritual knowledge outside of Christ. We have and there's no hidden knowledge here. What, what we have, we have it through Jesus Christ and through the Word of God. Ephesians 4, But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard of him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. We do not need the writings of any cult or false religion or man-made philosophy. We have the wisdom of the Word of God. And Paul commended the Colossians for the steadfastness of your faith. In verse 5, Paul encouraged them to keep making spiritual progress. You know, it's important to understand what's happening, but it's vital that we stay in the Word of God, that we meditate on Scripture, that we renew our mind through, through the Bible. It, that's the only way that you can, can understand this. Honoré was telling me back in the room that he often gets questions about this as he goes to different churches. And, and he says, what I tell them is, if you try to understand this from man's point of view, you're, you're, you're going to be confused. You have to filter it through Scripture. You have to see it through the Word of God, which is tremendous advice. Verse 6, as you therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, as you've been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. If you are not growing in your faith, if you're not walking in your faith, you are going to be the first to fall prey to false teachers and false philosophy. I'm not saying you're going to lose your salvation, but you're in for a world of hurt and confusion that is so unnecessary. False doctrine fractures the unity of the church. It fractures the unity of the church. I'm, I'm so discouraged that, that some of the men that are leaders in the evangelical church are now social justice pastors. And, and they're talking about how social justice now, we've got to bring this in. And I, it, I just remember the social gospel. And I, and I remember what happened with the social gospel. And when you take the focus off the gospel, then you lose focus. And pretty soon you're out into this world of, of wokeness. And, and everything's going to be about race. And people are going to get off center from teaching the truth of the word of God. That's what Paul says. Don't let anybody take you captive through philosophy and empty deceit. Don't become a captive to the modern cult 
of wokeness. It's a satanic doctrine. If you want to see what, how bad this is, even just in secular world, I, I encourage you to Google Evergreen College and uh, Professor Brett Weinstein. And they were teaching this in the college, and guess what? It took root. The students believed it. And so it ended up because this one professor and a comment that he made, and the whole college turned into a riot and just insanity, sort of a microcosm of what you're seeing played out on the streets in our nation. This will decimate the church. 1 John 2.26, these things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. Remember, when the Apostle Paul finished talking about the, the, the armor of the Lord in Ephesians 6, then he talked about prayer, prayer. I think one of the great weapons that we can use against this is prayer. I mean, really praying for our nation, praying for a spiritual awakening to, con to, to confront the secular and satanic awakening. The Church of Jesus Christ in America needs to pray for a spiritual awakening, not a cultural awakening. G.K. Chesterton, he wrote, at least five times the faith has to all appearances gone to the dogs. In each of these five cases, it was the dog who died. <laughs> I like that. And I pray that will happen in America. I believe it is part of the spirit of Antichrist. I, 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 like Paul, I believe we're living in the last days. I believe this is another indication of that. And, and, and that spirit of Antichrist, which is in the world, and, and it's, Satan is just so insidious. He just has ways of, of attacking us. He always comes in from the side door or the back door. And, and, and at first, he, he comes up with things that, for many people, it seems so good and, and it seems so positive, but then you see the seeds. And now, you're, now we're seeing the seeds of what's happening through these theories, these false philosophies of men. Do not be deceived. Check it out for yourself. Stay in the word of God. Grow in your faith. And God will prom has promised you to give you that anointing that we read about in 1 John 2, which is the indwelling Holy Spirit who will lead you into truth and will magnify Christ.